All right, guys, welcome to the first showcase of my 4T40E transmission controller. Uh, my name is Brian Whalen. Uh, on the JBO, I'm known as WhaleSack. Uh, what we have here is the 4T40E transmission controller. Uh, on the board, we have, uh, let's see here, over here we have the manual switch. I'm using wires right now with pull resistor, pull down resistors actually. Um, to provide uh, switching methods. I don't have any dip switches right now. Um, we've got the manual override here. These four orange wires correspond to the range switch. Uh, top momentary push button here is an up. This is the manual upshift. Second one is the manual downshift. Third one is the torque converter clutch brake switch. Uh, that releases the torque converter clutch when uh, you apply the brake. Uh, fourth one here is right now with the momentary button, but uh, it'll actually just be a normal switch, and that's the torque converter clutch lock. Um, if you just, for whatever reason, just want to lock the clutch uh, at any point. In the middle here, we've got uh, one, two, three, four. So we got five analog inputs here. Uh, one is first is for. Uh, throttle position sensor, second is RPM, uh, third is the vehicle speed, fourth is the transfluid temp, and the fifth is the coolant temp. Uh, these two right now will obviously not be uh, analog, they will be uh, different routines counting the uh, notches or teeth, um, whichever we left or we're talking about. Uh, over here, the top green one, is your one to two shift solenoid. Uh, the yellow is the two, the two to three shift solenoid. Red is the torque converter clutch solenoid. And the yellow, or the white actually, uh, is the line pressure solenoid. And on the screen, we're actually measuring both uh, uh, both PWM signals for the torque converter clutch and the line pressure. Uh, let's see here. All right. On the top is a 42 hertz signal uh, that corresponds to the torque converter clutch. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but down here it says 42.02 hertz. Uh, the bottom signal is supposed to be a 614 hertz signal. Unfortunately, I'm only using or I'm using a uh, uh, 11 megahertz oscillator, which is a little bit too fast to use the built-in PWM. Uh, so I'll have to step that down to an 8 megahertz oscillator, which is coming in the mail uh, at some point. Uh, if you can't see it. Yeah, the farthest I can divide down the clock for the uh, line pressure is about 675 hertz. Um, like I said, we need a 614 hertz signal for that. Uh, this might work as, as is, but uh, I'd rather not chance it. So we'll, uh, we'll do it the way it's supposed to be done. All right, so let me get back to triggering the first channel here. All right, so what I'm going to show, show today is uh, the manual control. Uh, all the functions work properly uh, for all the different ranges that I've tested so far. Uh, verse, neutral drive, um, one, two, and three uh, positions. Uh, but right now we'll just we're just testing uh, the drive position with the manual override uh, set to one. So. As it sits right now, um, there's in the shifting uh, method that I'm using, I'm only allowing certain RPMs in order to shift uh, for the sake of over revving uh, when down shifting at too fast, too high of a, a speed, and uh, from stalling, trying to upshift uh, a little bit too, uh, a little bit too slow. Uh, so. What I'll show right now is just the 
the shifting sequences here. So this first gear corresponds to a on off for the one two and two three uh, shift solenoids. And like I said before, that's these two here. Uh, so the way I have it right now, it should just allow uh, upshifting. Yeah, there you go. So that's second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And if you keep pressing it, it won't let you go past fourth gear in the sake of you know, accidentally over wrapping back around and going to first gear at you know, 90 miles per hour. Uh, so if you want to downshift, it's third gear, second gear, first gear. And the same thing with this. You can't go any farther down than uh, first gear. Okay, so that's that. Uh, the actual pulse width modulation, uh, I guess I can show too. Uh, so, like I said before, uh, top one here is throttle position, this analog pot. Uh, second one is RPM. Uh, for the manual uh, method right now, all I'm using is uh, a table uh, using interpolation to make a smooth transition between uh, table values. So I guess we can look at the uh, torque converter clutch right now. So I'll set RPM down to zero and as you see the torque converter clutch duty cycle goes down to zero. So throttle position and RPM are both at zero right now increase throttle position with RPM staying zero, you'll see that I only allow it to go up to about, I think, 50% is the duty cycle. Uh, I don't have duty cycle set up here right now. Hold on. Yeah, 49.6%. So, when RPM is zero, uh, the torque converter clutch doesn't up the full lock. So we'll put the uh, bring the throttle position back down to zero. So RPM and throttle position are both zero. So if we increase RPM with throttle position staying zero, uh, see something similar here. Not a long full lock uh, for because this will with RPM being higher. Uh, this will correspond to the decel condition here. So. All right, so with RPM high now, the highest it is, uh, we'll increase throttle position and see that we get a full lock 93% duty cycle. Okay, um, and to show the, uh, all right, so we've got the duty cycle down to about 50% again. So the other thing we have is, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, is the torque converter prep torque converter clutch brake and torque converter clutch lock. Um, the torque converter clutch brake is uh, a switch that uh, pretty much any, uh, all four T40Es use, uh, which releases the torque converter uh, on D-cell. So if we press it, you see that torque converter clutch goes to zero. Release it, it goes back up. The torque converter uh, lock is something that I added. Uh, someone had mentioned on the board before about having trouble dynoing with uh, not being able to lock third gear. Uh, this will allow you to lock any gear. So you just it is it will just be a switch in the final implementation. So uh, right now it's just a momentary button. So you press it, full 93%. Release back to looking up at the tables. Uh, so. That's that. Uh, what's the other one? Oh, yeah. I also had, uh, implemented a line pressure uh, lock, basically. So, uh, if you're ever to use it for whatever reason, you might want, you know, just to set your line pressure to full 160 psi at any point. Um, I guess this would allow you to do that. I don't know why you necessarily need that, but. Um, here you go. There's actually, I actually have a set on the coolant uh, analog right now because I've unfortunately ran out of uh, inputs on my pick here. So since I'm using the RPM and the VSS as analog inputs here, so 
I'll just show you this here. Uh, increased coolant. So this is actually this isn't coolant. This is um, the line pressure switch or line pressure lock switch, basically. So increase it, and there. it's a point where uh, the code sees that it's above a certain value and sets it to zero. So we can just mess around here, increase the duty cycles. Uh, yeah, so that's 40% is the max duty cycle, um, which corresponds to 50%. Uh, this is zero TPS and um, zero RPM, basically. Uh, and if we trigger the uh, line pressure lock, basically the full line pressure goes to zero. So that's pretty much it for the manual routine. Uh, if I had dip switches here, I would probably be able to show you this, uh, all the different methods in a more timely manner here, but uh, unfortunately not. Um, I'll show you guys some more uh, as it uh, develops, but uh, as it stands right now, this is what the 4240 transmission controller uh, looks like.